Abstractions offer a means to create reusable code base across multiple PD documents. You can also create visual abstractions. These are abstractions that have some sort of GUI element built into them. I've got a simple looper here. It's two tables, one for the left channel, one for the right channel. And since I don't need to manipulate the tables, I'm using a simple tab play object to read the tables. Let's take a listen. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a meter bridge, a two-channel meter bridge that'll uh, visualize the DB uh, coming out of the two channels. So what I need to do is I need to take the final gain stage, create a VU object. Notice that the object is not, um, it's not audio rate, it's control rate. So then I'm going to make an envelope follower, ENV, tilde, put it after the final gain stage, and then take the output of the envelope follower, apply some math to scale the values so that they can be appropriately read in the VU object. Play it again. And now we see some sort of visualization of the amplitude coming out of um, this particular channel. Now this is fine and dandy, it works, but what I'd like is a reusable object that is essentially a two-channel meter bridge. To create this, I'll make a new document, and I'll right-click the background and choose Properties, Graph on Parent. So what this will do is it'll create a red box where I can put all of my GUI elements, and when I create an abstraction, those GUI elements will appear. I know that the height of one of those VU objects is roughly 140 pixels when you take into consideration appropriate padding, so I'll change the Y size to 140. Now I'll create a VU object, and I'll place it within the red box. Since I want two channels, I'll need two of these, so I'll copy this one and paste it, and I'd like it to be rather close, but you can see that the problem is that the numbers overlap. We have a hack for that. What it'll involve is right-clicking the leftmost VU, choose Properties, and we're going to blend the text uh, to the background so it won't appear. It actually will still be there, but since it's the same color of the background, it'll appear like it's missing. So we'll choose Label and the color white. Now it looks like it's disappeared, it hasn't really, it's still there, and we'll move the right view over. Okay, so now we'll create the objects necessary to scale the incoming data um, to display appropriately. So we'll need our envelope follower, and we'll need the math, minus 100, and any objects outside of the red box will not be seen. And as well, if they're not GUI objects and they're in the red box, they wouldn't be seen. So it doesn't really matter how you're going to place these in or out of the red box. Okay, we'll tidy it up and we'll do another set for the right channel. Okay, we need to get audio into this particular object, so we'll need to create some inlets. Okay, so we'll make inlet with a tilde because we need audio rate in. And we have separate channels, so it makes sense to create another one. So at this point, this abstraction would be used to just take in the audio and display um, some visualization of dB. But we might want to make a throughput so that then out of the object, it might go into the DAC. And as well, we could, we could change this so that the DAC was actually in the object, or we can create a volume um, knob or a panner. We'll keep it really simple for now. So we'll create outlet with a tilde, and copy and paste it. I'm placing it to the side simply because it's there. There's no need to place it anywhere else. And I'm going to send the incoming audio straight to the outlet so that it can go to the DAC. Finally, I need to save this file, save, and then give it a name. I'll call it meter-bridge with a tilde. And I, you want to follow the naming convention so that if it does involve audio rate, um, it has a tilde at the end. Okay, now we'll close this. And now 
Simple Looper is in the same directory as meter uh, dash bridge. So if I just type meter uh, dash bridge tilde, then we see our new meter bridge. There's a problem in that we can still see the name of the object. That's okay, we can fix it. So we'll open up the object, go to the desktop, here it is. Right click the background, choose properties, and then choose to hide object name and arguments. We'll save it, close it, and now you can see the object name is no longer there. So now to apply this, we'll disconnect the final gain stage from the DAC, pipe it into the meter bridge. It's going to be a bit of a messy solution. And then we'll play the file. Now, if you want to use this across multiple documents, then what you do is create some sort of abstraction folder, or you would identify a folder that has your abstractions, and you go to PD Extended, Preferences, and Path. And here, you include the path to search for other patches or files, and if you point to the path of your abstraction, then you can, in any document, draw up that abstraction. I haven't done that with this particular file, but I would copy it to my abstractions folder, uh, so that I can include it with any file. So in the end, you've got this modular abstraction that's got visual output. It's very useful. You can imagine this with especially multi-channel multi output. And as well, if you're into building synthesizers, as an example, you can create these really nice um, modular pieces that can give you a really rudimentary uh, GUI for expressiveness.